Right, you know how English is one of the hardest languages to learn how to spell properly? Well, guess what? I decided to make a set of rules to make English a far easier language to spell. In fact, I remember on the 5th of May 2018 when I uploaded the video, everything crazy about the English language. But this time, we're going to focus on why English spelling does not make much sense compared with other languages, especially much more phonetic ones, like Spanish. Yeah? See? Right. First off, everything in this video. Vowel sounds. How do you pronounce this word? Is it read or read? The answer, it's both. Okay, no. How is one of them pronounced read and the other completely different? I mean, the E is supposed to make an E sound, right? As is the spelling E-E, -E, yeah? Oh, right, because one of them is the present tense or infinitive and the other is a past tense verb. The second word should be spelt as R-E-D, like the fucking colour. Really? Every single E sound should be spelled as E-E, E-A, -E -E or I-E. So that's going to be how it's spelled from now on, right? The A sound should be spelled as A-I, A-Y, or E-Y. So words like day, hey, pay, say, and way can say the way they are, but words like A, lane, name, shame, and tame should have a little Y in there. So the spelling can match the pronunciation. Yeah, E-H at the end of words and exclamations is going to be pronounced as eh, like meh, heh, and so on. The I sound is going to be spelt as I-G-H or Y-E, with a few exceptions, like in foreign words, you know, like this, you know what I mean? The pronoun I is going to be spelt I-G-H, Height is going to be H-I-G-A-T. Words like kite are going to be spelled K-I-G-A-T. Twilight will be T-W-I-G-H-L-I-G-T. Bi will be bi, as in the phrase. And tri will have a little E at the end. See? The R sound is going to become A-U, A-W, or O if it comes before an I or Y. Like, noise and toy can say the way they are, but war is spelled as W-A-W-R instead of W-A-R. Moral looks like this. Sure looks like this. Story looks like this. And thought looks like this. The O sound is going to be always O-O or O-U. So food and you can see the same they are, but... Rude is R-O-O-D, Jude is J-O-O-D, New is N-Y-O-O, it was the pronunciation, my accent, and Sio is going to become S-Y-O-O, in the received pronunciation. The R sound is going to be A-H when there is no R after the A, like in father, and when there is an R, it's A-R, like R which is of course going to be R in Canadian and American English. The OW sound is going to be spelt as O-W, so now it's going to be the same, but the O sound is going to be spelt as O-H. So here's both, here's boat, here's radio, and here's although. The shorter O sound is spelt as U, so put can stay as it is, but this is how foot is spelled, this is how shoot is spelled, this is how wood is spelled, this is could, and this is should. Oh, and tour is T-U-E-R, and cure is K-Y-U-E-R. So yeah, 
the R uh sound is always spelled as U-H. So you're going to get pun, just, son, one, and once, all spelled like that. Oh, wait a minute. What about different accents for vowels? Like in some other European languages that use the Roman alphabet. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, like horizontal line. Like this. Like, this is A. Uh, this is A. Eh, this is O. Oh, this is E. And this is the O sound. Yeah? The A eh sound could be written as an E with a second flex on top. The I sound could turn into I with two little dots on top. The O oh sound could be an O with a little second flex on top, just like the S eh sound with E. And the short O oh sound could become U with a little second flex on top if U on its own makes an R uh sound. Like that? Yeah? Just an idea. Oh yeah! And what about different regional accents and dialects around the world? Well, most spelling stays the same, since certain sounds are pronounced differently from country to country or region to region, and the endings AR, ER, IR, OR and UR in accents from places like Scotland, Ireland and North America can also stay the same. But let's talk about words that are said completely differently in some accents like they are in others, yeah? Like this. In most English varieties, it's tomato and therefore it's going to be spelled as t-o-h-m-a-h-t-o-h -H. or like this but in canada and the u.s that word is tomato as you already know so it's going to be spelled as t-u-h-m-a-y-t-o-h -H. or this you know the word orange it's going to be spelled as o-r-i-n-g in r-p and australian english and Canadians and Americans are going to pronounce it as A-U-R-U-H-N-G-E because they say it as orange. And finally for this part of the video, this metal, which is called aluminium, is spelt like this or this in most varieties in English. And of course it's aluminum in Canadian, American and Philippine English. And it's spelt like this. Yeah? it's time to talk about consonant sounds. To start off, let's talk about the letter C. You know how it makes a K sound before the vowels A, O and U, and it makes a S sound before the letters E, I and Y, yeah? Well, you know how CH makes a CH sound, like in chocolate? I thought the words character, chemical and mechanical shouldn't have a K sound made by CH, because CH is supposed to make a CH sound. So a character should be spelled like this or this. Chemical should be spelled as this or this. And mechanical should be this. Now you know the hard THE sound? It should be DH since it's voiced and the letters TH make a THE sound. So THE or THE looks like this. This is THAT. And this is THOUGH. Yeah? As with all these words. The letter G. This is another letter which has to do with one soft sound and one hard sound. The hard sound is when it comes before A, O and U, or a consonant, and it makes a G sound. And the soft sound is when it comes before an E, I or Y, when it makes a J sound, yeah? But then there were words like get, go and gift, and they should be spelt as G-H-E-T, G-H-I-R-L, and G-H-I-F-T, with the H being silent. Because, why? Why do they have to make a G sound when it's supposed to be a J sound before E-I-O-Y? You know what I mean? And now the letter H, which makes a H sound. So there is no chance in how English words like honest and its derivatives and our are going to have their H's silent. So they're going to be honest, this spelling, or this spelling, and this spelling, respectively. K-N. That makes a N sound, as you hear in the words no and knowledge. Oh, and knee. Well, knee can stay the same, but 
no, our knowledge should be changed as these, respectively. So the word now should change as this. But yeah, we're talking about vowels again, aren't we? Now you know the je sound, as in the ending S-I-O-N, like in television. Well, the words Asia, leisure, pleasure, and seizure are all going to look like this, or this. Because, you know, if the S-H sound is going to make a SH sound, which is voiceless, then the voice Z with the letter H are going to make a J sound. Makes sense, right? I mean, that's exactly the way phonetics work. Every single word is supposed to be pronounced as it's spelt, right? And for the last part of this video, why don't we talk about foreign words and names in the English language? I mean non-English words. Like those from Roman alphabet languages, like French, Spanish, German and Italian, can stay the same, but with the closest sounds that English can make, even if the letters don't match English phonetics. So Jean can stay the same as it is, Johan is Johan, Juan is Juan, Ludwig is Ludwig, and Giovanni is Giovanni, like that. But this should be said as Eiffel, not Eiffel, as in the Tour Eiffel. And this is a French word, so it should be Bolognese instead of Bolognese. Now, words and names for languages with other scripts like Russian, Arabic, Chinese, and Japanese must have an accurate transliteration and pronunciation in the English spellings, right? So Russian words and names like Lenin, Putin, Stalin, Trotsky, and Tchaikovsky can stay the same in their English counterparts. But these names should be Boris, not the English Boris, Vladimir, not Vladimir, and Sergei is of Sergei. Because that's how those Russian names are pronounced in Russian. Da, yadakshe govri baruski. Anyway. About Arabic words and names, the Ain sound simply does not exist in English at all. But these names should be pronounced as Umar, not Omar, Ali, not Ali, and the name Ahmed should be Ahmed. Because to me, anything close to the Ah sound is hard to make an English pronunciation. Words and names with all these letters, Sad, Da, 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 and Qaf, like I explained in my last video, should be said as a normal counterpart because the emphatic sounds in Arabic simply don't exist in English either. But words in names of Arabic words that have the kh sound should keep that sound, like in Khaled or Khartoum. Chinese words and names should sound as close as they do in the standard Mandarin pronunciation. So the anglicized versions of Aho. Huawei and Shanghai can say the way they are, but Beijing should become Beijing, not Beijing. And Mao Zedong should become Mao Zedong, not Mao Zedong. Japanese words are easy to pronounce, and words like anime, sushi, manga, ramen can say the way they are, but this word should be Neko, not Niko. This word should be Kitsune, not Kitsune. This should be Shogun, not Shogun. This should be Karate, not Karate. And this should be, of course, Kamikaze, not Kamikaze. So that is pretty much the basics of my own English spelling reform. I hope you've enjoyed it, at least I've learned something from it, because as you probably guessed, it's now the end of this video.